Genesis 9:5, it is unclear from the translation as to whose blood, if it is shed, will bring consequences to whom. Translating Adam as man clouds the issue. The verse should be understood as a warning to outsiders that the post-flood survivors, the sons of Noah, fall under God's protection and that to harm them will bring retribution. Genesis 9 to 5. Whosoever sheddeth an Adamite's blood, by an Adamite shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he Adam. As translated, Genesis 11, 1 states, and the whole world was of one language and one speech. This opening verse in Genesis 11 is entirely misleading as translated. Although the Hebrew safa can mean language, in this verse it should have been translated lip. This is the word used in the Septuagint, and it was translated lip 162 times by the King James translators. Only seven times did they employ the word language. Even in Shinar, two unrelated languages were spoken, Akkadian and Sumerian notwithstanding numerous languages were spoken throughout the world at that time. The history of Mesopotamia is important to understand how this verse should be translated and understood. All the major cities were building massive towers with temples on top adorned by cut stone and lapis lazuli to honor the city gods. In Babylon, Marduk was the city god by the time of the Babylonian Empire and may have been the god in residence at this earlier date. Whatever the case, these enormous civic work projects required engineering to design the structure and intensive labor to erect. Decorative stones for the temple had to be imported and hauled up the Tigris River. This project in Babylon was duplicated in neighboring cities as a competition grew to outdo one another. The era of ziggurat building lasted for hundreds of years and must have been on the minds and lips of early, early city dwellers caught up in these monuments to paganism. They were of one lip and one speech, just as stated in Genesis 11.1. Genesis 11.5.6, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of Adam builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people are as one, and they have all one conversation. The Lord speaks in Genesis 11, 7 to 9. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their speech, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the land, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the speech of all the land, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the land. It is important to reiterate that Genesis 10 already described the dispersion of the sons of Noah upon his death. We would not expect Japhethites to be involved in Babel as they already headed west. Canaan and his flock took over the city of Abla in a land that was not promised to them. Mizraim and his sons located in Egypt. Noah's great-grandson, Havilah, was in Arabia. Cush originally occupied a portion of western Iran. Elam took over an existing city, Susa, the central city of Persia. Asher founded cities and likely conquered one or two in settling Assyria, and so on. The ones adversely affected by the event in Babylon were the descendants of Arphaxad, who was in the chain of ancestry, leading to Abraham and Nimrod himself, of course, and his particular band of followers that would have included his own family members and perhaps some Sumerians, who also may have been in residence. Although the Greek Septuagint was widely in circulation at the time of Christ, the Masoretic text was brought into existence, compiled by the Masoretes from Hebrew manuscripts and the earliest fragments can be dated to the 9th century A.D. For whatever reason, the King James Version was translated without the Greek text. 
Had the translators been able to consult the Septuagint and took it into account, giving it some weight, they may have avoided an obvious deletion in the Hebrew text that carried over to the King James Bible. When Luke recorded the ancestry of Christ in Luke 3, all that was required was for him to look it up in the temple at Jerusalem where the births and deaths of Jews was recorded until the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. In Luke 3.36, we find the name of Canaan recorded between Arphaxad and Salah that is missing in Genesis and Chronicles. In fact, an entire verse is missing in the Masoretic text that is contained in the Septuagint. This is the text as it is written in the Septuagint that should be added for greater accuracy in the ancestral chain leading to the Savior beginning at verse Genesis 11:12. And Arphaxad lived an hundred and thirty-five years, and begot Canaan. And Arphaxad lived after he had begotten Canaan four hundred years, and begot sons and daughters, and died. And Canaan lived an hundred and thirty years, and begot Selah. And Canaan lived after he had begotten Selah three hundred and thirty years, and begot sons and daughters, and died. The entire Revised King James Version is on our website, available for download. I want to thank Ken Miller, who has assisted me in these episodes, and thank you for watching us. It is our sincere hope that the information we have provided will be a help to you in your understanding of these long, misunderstood passages of Scripture. And if we have helped you in your understanding, Perhaps you could be so considerate as to pass it along to your own family and friends through the use of social media. We also want to thank our sponsor, Christ Church, located in Fairfax Station, Virginia. All of these episodes can be found on our website at genesisproclaimed.org. And may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you.